Can God make you bold? The short answer is absolutely. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and self-control. Today in this video, I want us to look at the book of Acts chapter four. Did someone say Acts? Not that kind of Acts. All right, so Acts chapter four starts off with Peter and John. They're in the middle of preaching. Peter and John had just healed a man who had been crippled for like over 40 years. And so word is spreading that these people have a powerful message. What was their message? That Jesus died and rose again and that we can look forward to the day of resurrection. Now, Sadducees are getting upset because the Sadducees, they don't believe in the resurrection, which is why they're sad, you see. Everyone who is somebody in Jewish authority shows up to interrogate Peter and John. In whose name and whose power did you heal that man? Peter spoke, but before he spoke, the, the scripture says that he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And was, it was almost as if Jesus himself just showed up and spoke for Peter because the words that Peter speak are so powerful and they're so bold. Peter says, if we're being interrogated because of a kind act we did the other day, and if you really wanna know who did that, then let everyone know that Jesus the one that you crucified, he is the one that had the power to do what you are now witnessing. And the guy that they healed was standing right next to them. So like there's the proof right there that this was a genuine miracle. Then on top of that, Peter quotes an Old Testament passage that it would take scholars to really dissect it and understand it and know how to apply it right then and there. But Peter just quotes it and applies it to what's going on. He then says, there is no other name under heaven by which men must be saved, but through Jesus. Talk about boldness. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished. They took note that these men had been with Jesus. So the first point is God can make you bold even if you're ordinary. Peter and John are just ordinary people. Sometimes we can think that if we're not special, if we're not extraordinary, we can feel insecure about things. You know, if you didn't go to college for your education, you can start to feel insecure about that. If you grew up with one parent instead of two, you can start to feel insecure about that. Then you start thinking, well, that's my limit. I'll just be able to do ordinary things because I'm just an ordinary person. Peter and John were ordinary. They really were just ordinary fishermen. God can take ordinary people like you and I and do extraordinary things. So I have a question. Do you feel like you're limited by your education or your skills or your abilities? Do you feel like you're limited by the job that you're in? Pish posh. I don't even know what that means. Pish posh, declaring one's opinions or thoughts absurd irrelevant or redundant, blowing off someone's statement. So if you're feeling like you're just ordinary and you're never gonna be used in a powerful way in God's kingdom, I wanna remind you of Moses who felt like his mouth was ordinary. God, you've picked the wrong guy because I, I can't use my mouth very well. And God's, God's answer is pish posh. Who made your mouth? Put your ordinary skills, your ordinary job, your ordinary you know, whatever it is, into the hands of God. Just see what he can do. Number two, God can make you bold even in the face of threats, even in the face of opposition. Threats are meant to stop us. Have you ever wondered why lizards do push-ups? They're like threats. Don't come into my territory and don't mess with me. Peter and John, they're threatened by these Jewish authorities who want them to stop talking about Jesus being raised from the dead, but there's a problem. The man that they healed is standing right there. And I like to imagine he's doing backflips too, which is driving them nuts. And so they can't really do anything to Peter and John, but 
threaten them and then let them go. They leave and they immediately go to other believers, send up a prayer to God, asking God for help. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Notice it's not, Lord, crush their threats, crush our opponents, crush our enemies. It's consider their threats and then enable us to continue to speak the name of Jesus. What if you said a prayer right now asking God to not take away the challenge, the opposition, the threat, the fear, but you ask God to fill you with boldness instead of giving up at the challenge, instead of giving up at the opposition and the threats and the fear, instead of giving up, what if you raised up? What if you ask God to help you, enable you to rise to the challenge, to make you bigger and stronger than your opponents, to make you bigger and stronger than the opposition? Why? Notice this prayer is not a self-seeking, self-centered prayer because the very next verse says, stretch out your hand, not to strike the enemy, stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. In other words, they're saying, God, please don't stop working through us. Embolden us and let us heal more people. Let us help more people. Let your gospel message go out to as many people as possible. Now, a lot of times when people uh, threaten us, they want to shake us up. They want to shake us to the core to where we just freeze up and we stop doing whatever they want us to stop doing. Right after the prayer, the scripture says that God, he shaked the place that they were in and that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then they went out and they had even more boldness. If you find yourself shaken by people who are trying to scare you, Pray to God, ask him to help you to rise to the challenge, and then see if he shakes you with more boldness. See if he gives you his strength. See if he helps you to focus not on your opponents and how big they are, but he helps you focus on how big he is. Number three, God can make you bold even in the face of death. It was just two months earlier that Peter denied Jesus. Why did he do that? Because the impossible happened. Peter had seen people want to kill Jesus before, but every single time people tried to kill Jesus in the past, Jesus always got away. So when Jesus was actually taken, Peter in that moment is filled with fear and he denies even knowing Jesus. That was two months earlier. Now he's standing before the Jewish highest authorities, the high priest, and he tells them, you crucified Jesus, he raised from the dead. When they say, you need to stop preaching in his name, you know what Peter's answer was? Pish posh. Is it better for us to listen to you or to listen to God? We can't help but continue to preach Jesus. Talk about boldness. Now, what explains the change of behavior? from two months earlier being so afraid of dying that he denies Jesus to now two months later, he's in front of the very people that led to Jesus' death and he, now Peter isn't afraid to die. I think the only rational explanation is that Peter actually witnessed the resurrected Lord. He actually saw Jesus come back after Jesus already died. Peter cannot help but tell people about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There were so many people converting to Christianity and there was this huge unity movement where people were united, not by race, not by nationality, not by gender. They were united by the resurrected Jesus Christ, the one who died but rose again and was alive, living in them and helping them. So going back to our question, can God make you bold? Absolutely. Peter and John were ordinary just like you and I. And even though they were ordinary, even though they had opposition, they had threats, even though they faced death, they were able to be bold because God enabled them to be bold. Whatever it is that's giving you that challenge, ask God in a bold fashion, will you please make me rise to the challenge and let's see what God can do through you and me. 
David, go ahead and look at me like you're like you're you're looking at my Oreos, but you don't want me to catch you.